watch loving brothers and sisters. I love my watch loving brothers and sisters. <laughs> Today I bring you another review, a watch that has actually been requested on the channel before, and as luck would have it, I had a chance to pick one up for review. Uh, by pick one up, I mean borrow. So uh, I've been a terrible friend and continuing to negatively influence my friends and make them buy stuff. And there was a Star 009 running around in the watch pool of my friends, and I picked it up and did a review on it. So hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Uh, the Sarg is another one of these JDM watches, Japanese domestic market watches from Seiko that um, I'm guilty of drooling all over and I know a lot of you guys in the community now that you've discovered them really like them too. So uh, with all that said, um, customary wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing the uh, the Reverie. Um, it's a classic from uh, a startup in Singapore. Um, they sent me this watch for review. I'll be doing a review on it shortly. I've already posted it on Instagram and I know a lot of you guys were really excited about it. So. Um, I look forward to doing a review on the Reverie for you. But uh, with all that said, guys, let's go ahead and check out the Seiko Sarg 009 review. All right, guys, let's go ahead and strike another JDM legend off of the list for Seiko. I know Seiko lovers uh, watching this are going to be as excited as I am to be able to review this watch. You guys know that I am a massive, massive fan of uh, Japanese domestic market watches, that the Sarb series which of course I'm wearing right now for this special occasion, is one of my favorite watch series of all time. Um, and that I also am massively biased and that I love all things Japanese, but uh, the Japanese, just, um, Japanese domestic market watches are incredibly well made. Um, I do say in all my videos, and I know people get really ticked off when I say this, that these are every bit as good to, in my mind as a lot of Swiss equivalents and I would be willing to bet that if I stuck this in somebody's hand and told them it was a Rolex with their eyes closed, they would believe me because it literally feels that good. So what are we looking at here? Well, as I said, we're looking at the SARG SARG009. Now for those of you that are uh, unfamiliar with this particular model, it is uh, similar to the SARB series and actually the other SARGs like the Alpinist and that it uses the Seiko 6R15 movement. Great movement, 23 joules, um, actually mentions here on the dial, and it's got about a 50 hour power reserve. Uh, I think it's about plus 25 to minus 15 seconds per day. Um, it's great, you know, it's not the fastest running movement in the world. It's right around 21,000 uh, beats per hour, but uh, what it lacks in uh, high beats, it makes up more in robustness and uh, do not need to have it serviced frequently. Um, if I look at the case back here, you can see there is the marked rotor, Seiko 23 Joules, Seiko Time Corp, uh, Japan. And it actually says Japan over here as well. Shooting shiny things is always fun on camera. And there is the beautiful balance wheel running right there. Love these movements. Uh, similar architecture to the 4R series and the 7S26. You may or may not be able to see it here, but there actually is a solid metal so I can get this to focus here. Retainer ring inside the case actually holding the movement in instead of that cheap plastic stuff you see on inferior watches. Movement is wonderful, robust workhorse. Um, all the features you would expect from a modern day Seiko, including hacking, which we all take for granted these days. Which is first position. Not a screw down crown, by the way. Go ahead and get that started. Um, they say it's about 10 ATM water resistance. Um, you guys, if you've watched me, know that unless it has a screw down crown, I uh, do not test the water resistance of watches. This is a, a watch I'd wear in the shower and maybe wash dishes with, but that would be the extent of it. But first position, screw down, is not screw down, excuse me, it's winding. Second position, change the date. Fun stuff, and third position is hacking. And that's what uh, we all get excited about these days with Seiko, as we've lived so, so many years where Seiko was uh, really late to get on the hacking uh, movement, which is, uh, it's one of those things that, you know, we take for granted on Swiss watches for so many years, but uh, for Seiko, it's kind of been one of those things that's more of a, a recent fad for us. Speaking of the crown, as is common on many of these Japanese domestic market watches, you can see there is the classic signed S. Love that. You know, it's kind of a little bit of a nod to the Grand Seiko line in terms of a marked crown. It's uh, it's very cool and it's very well done. And the crown, as with all these Japanese Seikos too, is finely machined, easy to grip, and uh, it just feels nice. And as you wind the movement, 
there's just a great, you know, mechanical feel. Um, and that's what makes these watches in my mind so special. They feel like a rugged tool, like a rugged companion. And, you know, that's just kind of what watches are all about to me. You know, I'm not one of those people that's overly impressed by crazy decoration or ultra thin movements. I tend to be one that gets impressed by just durability, simplicity of design, and just highly functional pieces. And I think that's why I'm so biased towards Seiko. And I'm not to say that my opinion is the only one that matters. You all should feel the way I do, but I'm just kind of giving you guys a little bit of the color that I look through when I look at this watch. Um, I love tools. I love things that are just well-designed and rugged. And when you feel this watch, when you hold this watch, when you wind this watch, it just feels like an elegant machine. And all Japanese Seikos, uh, JDM Seikos have that feel about them. Um, I would say the same about Rolexes too. There's just that great mechanical solidarity about them that is something that is very special and I just so appreciate. Now, I'm sure you guys are gonna ask me how big the case is. The case is 40 millimeters. It is a little bit larger than a Saarb. Um, it's kind of right in between the Alpinist and the Saarb itself. Now, uh, as with all these Japanese domestic market Seikos that are higher end with the 6R15 movement, you do get sapphire crystal. And I also really like the, the basic Arabic dial. It's very clean, very simple. And I think I like too, which is kind of interesting, is I like how much loom there is on the second hand. You usually don't see loom going that far up the second hand, which I think is a really nice touch. Um, I just, I don't know, I kind of like that. I like that they've kind of went a little bit out of the way on the loom there. Um, as you guys saw in the intro, by the way, as with all Seikos, this thing has got some pretty stellar loom on it. Um, like the other uh, common Japanese domestic market Seikos we like to get so excited about, it's a very thin profile case. You could, of course, wear this with a cuffed shirt. It will slide around in your sleeves very easily. And, of course, the finishing on it is impeccable. Um, the combination of brushed and high polished surfaces is done with an absolute incredible precision. The transition between the surfaces is done extremely well. Um, I mean, it is just, there's, there's no flaws. It's done perfectly. And, um, you know, even on a lot of other mainstream watches, you tend to notice a little bit of, you, you can pick up flaws, but, uh, on these Japanese Seikos, you really, you don't. I mean, they're just so well made, even like I'm petting it kind of on the side of the case. That is just so well done. Uh, the bracelet on this is very uh, similar to like an Oyster style Rolex bracelet. It's very clear to me where Seiko got inspiration for this bracelet. And it's interesting because if I compare this to the bracelet on my Saarb 35, I like this bracelet much better. I pointed this out in the Alpinist review um, that this is thinner and I like these thin lugs, or not these thin lugs, these thin links. It very much reminds me of a Rolex and I, I don't know what it is. I'm, I very much like thin bracelets, just like I like my leather straps thin. I just, I don't know what it is. I like a chunky watch with a thin bracelet. It's just something that I just happen to like. Um, these are push pin links um, and I'd say that's one of the, probably the few failings on this watch but at the price point it's not a big deal. One thing about these links though is they use like a pin and collar system and if you lose a collar when you're removing one of these links uh, the pins will just fall out. Be very very careful when you're sizing one of these watches. I've done it before myself so there's a little collar inside these links typically and then when you and it locks the pin in place and if you lose the collar you can slide the pin back through but there's no resistance holding the pin in and the pin will just fall out. I know a lot of people complain when they bought some of these watches second hand that the pins fall out and it's because the original owner didn't size it correctly. Um, you do get one, come on focus, you do get one fine adjustment right here so you can move this in or out and uh, you know for most people that should be enough and again that's really good as temperature changes, moisture changes that you can do a quick little adjustment to keep it relevant uh, to your wrist. Um, because you know our wrists can swell and our wrists can shrink and sometimes the watch feels loose and sometimes it feels really tight and making that little sliding adjustment moving the bracelet in or out that little notch there will uh, help it make it more comfortable for you. I do wish though that they were more like Rolex and uh, even Invicta and some other watches out there where you get more than just one micro adjustment. I wish the buckle was a little bit bigger and you had more micro adjustments but this complaint isn't exclusive to the Sarg. It applies to well, actually the entire Sarg line and even my Sarb. Um, speaking of the buckle, so it has, as with uh, the other Japanese domestic market ones that have the 6R and higher movements, this beautiful machine fold over clasp. In previous videos, I have compared this to uh, my Omega Seamaster 300. Um, it's very well machined, very precise, and it just clicks on. And it's got uh, dual deployment triggers here. Squeeze, open. 
and of course it's marked Seiko. Um, and actually this is very similar to the buckle you'd see on a Grand Seiko. Instead of saying Seiko here, you would just see GS. Um, one complaint about this that everybody seems to mention is there's quite a bit of a gap here between the bracelet and the buckle. And I know a lot of people that are OCD, that bothers them quite a bit. I'm extremely OCD and it doesn't bother me, but I have a pro Seiko and pro Japanese bias, so who knows, maybe I'm being overly kind about it. But you know, overall guys, it's just the details on these Japanese domestic watches. They just do it so well and they just feel so well made. And it's kind of one of these things that after you've had one of these and you've experienced one of these, you know, if you've experienced higher end Swiss watches, it's gonna feel right at home to you because the quality is that good. If you've been buying other watches in this price range, they're gonna feel like junk in comparison typically. Um, and it's kind of one of those things that once you get one of these, it kind of ruins you in other watches in this price range. And it's like anytime you get anything after that, it kind of, it feels cheap in comparison. And that's not to say that those watches in this price range are overpriced. If anything, it tells you that, you know, Seiko's really got these, these watches underpriced for what they are. I mean, their quality is really punching well above what they're selling for. And, um, you know, that's kind of a great thing. And if you even compare this to a Seiko model that they sell in the US, the quality just doesn't come close. So hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll go ahead and give you guys a quick wrist shot. This is not my watch. It belongs to my friend Mark and he has much smaller wrists than I do. So it's gonna be a little tight, but we'll go ahead and try that. So, you know, it fits me pretty good. 40 millimeters for me is a pretty good size. I typically like like 42 to 44. Um, but you know, the Sarb I'm actually wearing on my wrist right now is 38 and I wear this too all the time. So, I mean, I, it's a good size. Again, as I was saying, it's very slim to the wrist and um, very comfortable. And again, this bracelet is very much a, a good thickness for me. So love the simple dial. Uh, you know, I love everything about it, but you guys would expect that from me. So hope you guys found this helpful. Again, my only really criticisms of this watch um, would be is I wish they had more fine adjustments. And I hate the pin and collar system that Seiko uses. I've uh, had a lot of fun experiences with it, fun being sarcastic of losing a collar on one of these pins when I'm adjusting it. But beyond that, you know, what can I say, guys? I think any of the Japanese domestic market Seikos is going to be a good buy. And I would be stunned if you guys bought one and weren't as happy with it as I am with them. You know, it, it's basically what do you want? You know, do you want a dress watch? Get a Sarb. Do you want something more sporty? You got the Sarg line. Do you want an Alpinist? Or you got this, the Sarg 009. I mean, there's, there's so many different ones to choose from. And of course they have even higher end lines um, in the Presage range and there's the Brights and there's the Spirit line. There's so many different great Japanese domestic market Seikos out there and they're all just such wonderful watches that give so much value and I, you know, I, I recommend them all the time and I can't recommend them enough, you know. The fact that my Seikos get as much or more wrist time than my higher end Swiss watches is the best recommendation that I can give them. So, well, let's say, guys, let's go ahead and jump back. All right, guys, I hope you liked the review. Obviously, I have some biases towards Seiko, so I, uh, it's so hard for me to do an unbiased review because I'm obsessed with Japan um, and I'm obsessed with these Japanese domestic market Seikos. So I, I very much have my biases and I really try to keep those in mind and make sure these guys still get a, a good, honest review that isn't too much playing off my biases. So. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. A um, couple other things, I do still plan on doing a live session uh, next weekend, either Saturday or Sunday. Typically I do Saturdays. I understand though that some people can't make the Saturdays and they've been doing Sunday may be better for you guys. So if you have any feedback on that, please let me know below. As always, I may not be able to respond to all of your comments, but I do appreciate them and I do try to read them all. Usually I try is the key word there or key two words. I can't count. But uh, beyond all that guys, again, hope you enjoyed it. Um, my friend Ben from the Netherlands reached out to me, sent me an email. He's in the enviable decision of growing his watch collection. Um, he's already picked up two Cartiers and uh, now he's looking to get himself some sports watches. And he's really torn between picking up a no date sub and a Daytona ceramic. I know tough decisions there. Um, or he's thinking of a Speedmaster and a Seamaster, Seamaster combination. Um, he likes the Rolex sport look. He's looking for watches that he can wear every day, but he's not a fan of the Cyclops. I know I like the Cyclops a lot, but I know a lot of you guys out there don't like them either. I recommend that he look at the Air King and uh, perhaps an Explorer 1. And actually, the, what is it, the 16660, uh, the, uh, the earlier Sea Dwellers pre-Deep Sea. Um, but uh, you guys would be happy to get your feedback as well and uh, if Ben's watching hopefully you can benefit from what you guys think so if you have thoughts you know would you go Rolex would you go Omega or maybe you'd pick something else out for him he very much likes the Seamaster and Speedmaster as well 
So uh, go ahead and leave Ben some feedback below as well and give him some thoughts on what you think he should be doing in his collection. Um, all that said, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you disliked it, whatever you want to do about it. Um, peruse the channel, there's probably the videos of content you'll like. I also have the Sarb 001 review if you haven't seen that, and the Sarb uh, 35 review on the channel as well if you want to do some comparison and contrast. But uh, all that said guys, thank you so much. Love hanging out with you guys, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. But you gotta subscribe to watch it, remember that. All right, later.